In the last tutorial, I mentioned you have two solutions for getting better exposures when using any of the auto modes. You'll discover those solutions right here, right now. In fact, we are going to literally jump into a photo to dissect it, to understand how your camera is giving you the exposures it does. So previously you learned that your camera is programmed to set your exposures based on a mid gray of around 10 to 18% gray. So basically your camera has a built-in light meter. The light that enters the camera is measured by that light meter and based on how it's programmed, determines the camera settings it chooses for you. Now, when your camera gets the exposure wrong, you have two options that include either changing the default light metering mode or adjusting the exposure compensation. Let's explore the metering modes first. The three most popular types of metering modes include matrix metering, also known as evaluative mode if you're a Canon user, center weighted metering, and spot metering. Now, depending on your camera, you may have more options. For now, let's go over the basics of the three mentioned. In essence, you can control how your camera meters the available light based on one of those three metering modes. The matrix or evaluative metering mode is designed to evaluate all the light you see in your viewfinder. Of the metering modes you have, this is the most complex and what it does is it evaluates the light in five different zones It then calculates the different light levels in each section to give you an exposure. I find this metering mode works for most instances. It's when you start shooting portraits, for example, with the light behind them that you'll find it doesn't give a good exposure, especially when that light is really bright in the back. And at least the exposure isn't that good for your subject. You'll find they may end up being underexposed. And I'll demonstrate that and the other metering modes in a moment. Let's first go over the other two types. So next you have the center weighted mode, which evaluates the light more towards the center of the viewfinder and ignores the light outside of it. The spot metering mode is even smaller at around three to 5% of the viewfinder area. And it basically only evaluates the light in that small spot in the center of your viewfinder. Although some cameras will move the spot meter based on where your focus point is. So if you focus to the left or to the right, the spot meter will evaluate the light at that point in your viewfinder. So we're gonna head out to a local park so I can demonstrate how the different metering modes work and then we'll come back into the studio to take a deep dive into each one of those images to better understand how these metering modes work. So let's head out. All right, so for this photo shoot, I am shooting in aperture priority mode again, and I'm shooting at 2.8, and I have matrix metering set for the first image, and I'm going to compose her so she's on the left side, so we get some of the light from the background in the image as well, so we can compare how the light is metered with the three different metering modes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the first image here. All right, so for this first image, it is a bit underexposed, but overall, the exposure isn't too bad. The skin tones look pretty good. The background looks pretty good, but I think I would like it a little bit brighter. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch to center weighted mode to see if that gives me a better exposure. All right, so this time the image is overexposed in regards to the skin tones. And that's because the metering is being applied more towards the center and the light around the image is not being metered at all. So that background there in the back is much darker than the skin tones, which creates an overexposure of the skin tones. So this time I'm going to switch to spot metering mode. And because I have the focus point on her face, it's going to also meter the light in that area. So her skin tones, her hair, and maybe a little bit more around her as well. So let's see if we get a better exposure with spot metering. All right, so for this image, we did not get the exposure I wanted. 
the overall image is now underexposed and the skin tones are darker and that could be the way the light is being metered in that area where I focused. So overall, I believe the matrix mode gave us the best exposure. So we're gonna head back into the studio and take a closer look at these images to compare them a little bit more so I can give you some more guidelines on which metering mode to use and when. So this was the first image we took and I used the matrix metering mode for this particular image. And as you can see, it did a really, really good job in giving me a good exposure in camera. However, I do find that the image is around two third stops underexposed. And I based that on the brightness levels of her skin and this area right here, which is really dark and we're losing some detail in the hair and that's because it's underexposed. So the one thing I can do is I can increase the exposure compensation to make it brighter at time of capture, which you'll learn how to do very soon, or I can try and fix it in post-production. The problem with that is when you have an underexposed image like this, you're going to create new problems when you increase the exposure in your favorite editing software. For example, when underexposed, it can become muddy. The skin can become muddy and you'll lose some detail. The skin color can shift and become unnatural looking. You will also introduce digital noise and artifacts, all of which now require your attention and time to be fixed in post-production. So it's my recommendation to start your editing in camera by getting the exposure right at the time of capture versus fixing it after the fact. So when it comes to the matrix metering mode and this type of lighting condition, you'll often find that the exposure is close to perfect, like for this image. However, if the lighting of the scene is backlit and we don't have all these trees or these buildings here, and it's really bright in these two sections up here, then the matrix metering mode is going to overcompensate for this large amount of brightness levels in those two sections and will further underexpose your image. So remember, the matrix mode is evaluating the light in five different sections. And if one or more of those sections has a dominant brightness level that is very intense, it's going to overcompensate for that and will give you an exposure that will be more over or underexposed versus what I have for this image. That being said, the matrix mode is great for lighting situations like this, or even on cloudy days, when the light is muted. So here is the second image we took and I used the center weighted metering mode and this time the light meter was restricted to the center area and all the light outside of it has been ignored. And because we have a fairly dark area right here, that is affecting the light meter. And what the camera ends up doing is overcompensating for this dark area right here and gives us an overexposed image based on how it's programmed. So trying to fix the overexposed skin, you can see it's a lot brighter than it was before. And trying to fix that in post-production is going to create new problems that you'll have to try and fix. And just like with an underexposed image, you can end up with color shifts, muddy skin tones, and if too overexposed, you could lose detail that will be nearly impossible to fix. Now, in regards to using the center weighted metering mode, honestly, I've never used it and don't have any recommendations for it. Personally, I stick with matrix or spot metering. All right, so here's the third image we took and I used the spot metering mode for this and the exposure is nearly identical to the matrix mode, even though the metering was restricted to her face here as well as some surrounding areas. And that's because my camera allows the spot meter mode to move with the focus point, which of course was placed on her face. Overall though, the main area being analyzed is the skin since it makes up a larger portion of the section being metered. And this resulted in the camera compensating for those brightness levels and underexposing the skin around two thirds stops. Now, when it comes to shooting portraits, I always use spot metering since I want to expose for the skin. However, I prefer the skin to be a bit brighter and will use 
the exposure compensation tool to increase the exposure accordingly in camera. So your spot metering mode and the other metering modes could give you different results based on how your camera has been programmed. And you may not have issues with over or underexposing the skin, or you could end up with the opposite of my results and have overexposed skin. So you're going to need to test out your metering modes prior to a specific event in order to get the results you want. Then you'll know ahead of time what other adjustments to make to get the exposure right at the time of capture. And that is where your second option comes into play by utilizing the exposure compensation tool built into your camera. So to discover how to use exposure compensation and continue elevating your photography skills, click right there to watch episode nine.